Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Candy Bee Knitting. I'm Candy Bee. I be knitting. And this week I thought since I've been working on the Night Nook sweater, spoiler alert, I finished the Night Nook sweater, uh, and we are approaching Stephen West fourth annual hybrid knit along. That's uh, a uh, knit along he does from December 1st through the winter. And uh, it's coming up it's very soon. I, I believe there's kits on order and stuff like that. I thought this would be a perfect time to not only talk about my Night Nook sweater, but to do a little book review of Hyper Knitting Volume 1, which is a collection of patterns that came out in 2019. And every year since he's come out with a collection of patterns. And um, it's in conjunction with his hybrid knit along. But I thought I would just read just a few sentences from the introduction of this book to kind of give you a sense of what hybrid knitting is. When I say hybrid knitting, the words right here, it's like hibernation plus knitting together. Knitting is a year round activity for me, but nothing feels better than knitting inside during dark winter days. As the nights grow longer and the chills creep in, I can always count on the soothing sensation of knitting to provide comfort and warmth. I hope these woolly designs provide you comfort and knit, knit inspiration as you hibernate knit through the cold winter months. And there's a whole essay here at the beginning of the book about that, but it's basically all about really comforting, meditative, but still, you know, with the Stephen West vibe for the winter season. And this is actually the first of any Stephen West patterns I, I purchased. I was out of town and I, I found a local yarn store and I came across this book and I was like, oh, Stephen West, he's pretty popular. I, I know his patterns. They were still kind of beyond me, but I had this idea that it was kind of like an aspirational purchase. Like, oh, maybe one day I'll be able to knit something out of this. And I purchased this for $25 from my local yarn store. That's the... Um, the, the MRSRP or the um, the cover price for it and I thought I would just take you through pattern by pattern talk about the patterns talk about the book um, the book itself you can tell it's not it's about the size of the palm of my hand which is about seven and a half inches long so it's not the biggest book which is probably the biggest con to this collection as far as the printed version the printed version comes with a online code and I do prefer knitting from books, but it's nice to have the uh, the uh, electronic code if you are someone that more so knits from electronic patterns or an iPad or something like that. And I guess that's another negative too, because I like to knit from books. Um, it's a little bit small. It doesn't necessarily lie flat when you open it. And so sometimes I do have to print off the patterns, which kind of defeats the purpose of having the printed book but it is a collection of one two three four five six patterns for $25 which also is an excellent deal if you were to purchase these patterns individually electronically you're looking at about probably like $60 and you don't get the printed version with all the photography and stuff like that and the, the it has one cowl two hats two shawls and a sweater um, the only pattern I have not knit from this book is actually the first pattern in this book, which is the hybrid knitting cowl, which is a, one of those long tubular cowls that's knitted in the round and then sewn at the ends. And show this picture. Um, and he has this multicolored version and this two color version. That's the first pattern in the book. And it's the only pattern I haven't knit. And I started to knit it last year. And it was nothing against the pattern, it just wasn't the right time, and so I ended up ripping it out. But because I was looking at this with the intent of kind of going through the book, I was just like, oh, I'm only one pattern away from knitting this one pattern. And so I decided I am going to try to knit it this year. And next week, we're... Today's, dis uh, today's uh, November 22nd, I believe as I'm recording this and so next week is December 1st and so I'm thinking I'm going to I don't have an advent calendar as far as like you know the countdown calendars a lot of people have 
but I do love the idea of having a project like a hibernating project, the idea of hibernating, the idea of having a project to work on during the cold, dark winter days and also working with a lot of different colors and things. And so I do have plans to cast this on and I have quite the collection of Knit Picks palette. One of these days I'm going to do an episode about the yarns that I buy at thrift stores no matter what and Knit Picks palette is one of those yarns. And so I have two bags of this and so this is going to be my advent calendar for this year and I'm going to cast on that cow. And I'll, then I'll let y'all know about that pattern. But for now, um, I don't have much feedback on that first pattern. It is calls for fingering or sport weight. I'm thinking about holding that Knit Picks palette double just because it'll be thicker and I have a lot of it. And so I'll go through it and it'll be like a nice little stash buster. But yeah, that's the first pattern in the book. This is the cow. He has a multicolored version, like I said. And there's color work sections, there's a stripe section, there's slip, stip, slip stitch sections. Um, oh, here's the two color, the two color version. Um, but the next pattern is actually a pattern I, it's this is the pattern I've knit the most out of any knitting pattern ever. And it's the first pattern I knit out of here because I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, let's just do a simple hat. And it is called the Hyper Knitting Hat. And um, yeah, here's a picture of Steven wearing it. And basically it is a, it calls for Aaron weight. And it has all these motifs of knit and pearl bumps and it's the first pattern I knit out of that book and it's the first thing I ever knit for Mr. Rulud. And so this hat is a little worse for the wear because it's about two years old at this point. And so it's pilled quite a bit and it's acrylic. So it doesn't have a great stitch definition on it. And at the time, you know, Mr. Rulud was like, oh, can I get a hat? And I was like, yeah, sure. But, you know, he was kind of nervous about hand knits and I didn't know how he was going to take to hand knits. And so I just, you know, this is like a four weight acrylic from big box craft store. And he actually liked it a lot. And, you know, kind of that got the pole rolling on him, you know, being like, oh, I, I think I like hand knit stuff. Uh, this hat a double folded brim six inches of ribbing and then it goes into this knit and pearl motif and then there's some crown decreases and so it's quite it's more of like a I guess you call it like a hipster beanie fit fits pretty tight to the head which works for Mr. Rulud because he is bald not great for me because I do have kind of poofy hair and so this doesn't really fit on my head but this has become pretty much my go-to hat pattern I've knit it twice with the Knit Pearl Motifs 2 pattern, um, but other than that, I use the formula to knit any worsted weight hat, and so I've done a lot of gift knitting based on the numbers from this pattern, and so just this pattern alone has been worth the price of admission as far as being my first Stephen West pattern, uh, the first thing I ever knit for Mr. Rulu, a pattern that I go back to over and over again, and so... Uh, Maybe not worth $25, but definitely I didn't regret the purchase after I made this hat for the first time. So this one is definitely a winner. And uh, and I believe the pattern itself calls for mohair held double with a, a yarn. And so you get kind of like a fuzzy little halo effect with that too. Um, the other one I knit with is I knit with like a really greasy uh, sheepy sheepy wool. And that one came out really, really nice. I gave that to my brother-in-law. Uh, and then I, yeah, I just love, love a nice long brim and you can style it really differently if you have the longer brim on it. <clears throat> the next pattern in here is the first Stephen West shawl I ever made and it's the slumber shawl and it's very much, and that's why I picked this one because it's like, He's like, use Worcester or Aaron for a thicker look, use DK for a lighter look. And it's really, uh, what do you call that? Just, you know, no worries type of shawl. There's a feather and fan detail. 
and he uses four different colors and fades and what I did I used a Karen skinny cake and just knit the whole thing out of the Karen skinny cake until I ran out of yarn and it's one of those shawl patterns where you can pretty much knit until you run out of yarn and it's fairly easy to make it smaller make it bigger like I said you can use different weights of yarn uh, I this was also a gift knit, so I don't have my original anymore. I ended up giving it to a friend because I did use that Karen skinny cake and I ran out of yarn. And I have a friend that's a bit more petite than I am. And so it would be a more substantial shawl on her frame than on mine. And so I gave it to her, um, but definitely want to knit another one. Uh, like I said, really nice basic shawl, perfect entryway uh, to Stephen West. Uh, I, I remember people being like, oh, his patterns are so fun. And I was just like, well, knitting is fun. Like, I, it's my hobby, but I, it's not like a party. But this shawl is like a party. Um, I, I understood it when I started making that shawl. Um, yeah, nice feather and fan detail. You know, good kind of workhorse, you know, if you want to make a shawl. Like, it's the perfect shawl. And like he said in the intro about hybrid knitting, you know, enough interest to kind of keep you going but also has those moments of relaxation that I really like um, the next shawl and the second shawl in this collection is the cozy corner shawl and this one is a little different because uh, like I was saying with the other one I liked it because you can kind of feel out the pattern it's very intuitive if you want to make it smaller want to make it bigger if you want to just knit till you run out of yarn this one, I never really got that intuitive feel, uh, but a lot, a lot of fun to knit. Um, here, he um, the only downside is I looked at Ravelry product project pages and someone said they did not care for this one because they don't tell you exactly how to make this shawl he is holding because it is supposed to be more of a more of a scrappy situation. Um, and it is a great stash buster shawl. It is a good, as far as, you know, a substantial, large Stephen West slinket situation. It's perfect for that. When I say it's not intuitive to me, to me, I never got to the point in the pattern where I was just like, oh, the next section is X, Y, Z thing. Oh, if I wanted to stop, I could stop here. Or if I wanted to make it bigger, this would be the next situation. Maybe if I knit it again, I would be able to kind of see those breaks in the pattern more, but I never really got super comfortable with it, which is fine because it made it all the more interesting to knit. Cause I was like, okay, cause you're knitting these kind of teeth almost uh, with these um, yarn over details. But then the other side of the shawl has bumps as well. I don't know if you can see that but this side of the shawl isn't even either. So there's certain points where you're doing shaping on one side of the shawl, you're doing yarn overs, you're also doing some increases and in making teeth on this side of the shawl. And it's, it's an interesting ride. Uh, luckily I have way more than enough yarn. This is a lion brain shawl in a ball and I had tons of it. And so I was able to make it to pattern and make it massive. Um, Another winner. I don't think you can go wrong with Stephen West shawls, and I'm going to get into that with my final assessment of this collection. But just uh, for $25, I figured if I knit three things out of this book, then I'm golden, you know, as far as getting my money's worth. And I got this hat, and the two shawl patterns are pretty solid shawl, shawl, shawl patterns. Um, the next, and this is another picture of that shawl. And you see how difficult it is to like kind of fold the pages back, you know. So it, sometimes you, this one, this pattern, I definitely, I definitely had to print off. And you see how it's got teeth down here and then it's got the bumps kind of going down the side. Um, so yeah, you can see how difficult it might be to try to read a long shawl pattern out of a book that's this small and you're kind of like bending it to get it open. Um, the second, the next pattern is actually in the night nook, but I'm going to save that for last. 
uh, the last uh, pattern in the book is the snow flurries hat, which is actually the hat that's on the cover of the book. It's got the bubble stitch, um, a pom pom on the top if you like, but it's also got it uses short row shaping to make ear flaps. And so if you see he has them folded up here, but you can have them folded down over your ears. And this pattern probably is my least favorite in the book. It was nice to learn the bubble stitch and the bubble stitch is pretty straightforward, a lot simpler than you might think looking at it. And so that was neat to learn. The trouble with this one was when I got to, and this is him with the ear flap bent down. This is done with, let me bend that back so you can't see the pattern because someone's gonna freeze frame the YouTube video and print off the pattern. Um, you get down and you do short rows with the, um, to make these ear flaps and you're doing short rows and you're ribbing. And so it's a little, little tricksy. Uh, not only that, the pattern is very clear. <laughs> uh, it tells you, ex exactly hey you knit this then you knit this right you're doing short rows so you know you're knitting in the round and sometimes you're knitting flat it would have been nice <laughs> uh a lot of people if you look at the comments on Ravelry and I actually had to ask for pattern support I had to email the inbox which was very helpful they came back and there's a certain part where you you're knitting flat and then it says it does the pattern I wish the pattern would have said start knitting in the round again but it doesn't it just it it's it, it has some turn of phrase in it I don't know if I can find it but since then and there's you know like I said there were comments on the Ravelry being like how do I do this second ear flap what is going on how do I turn this and um it gave me so much trouble and I was kind of it, it really, ugh, ah, I just, ugh. um, yeah, uh, it, it definitely was, was a trying time for me to figure out, but since then, let me get to the point of what I'm trying to say, uh, an errata has been published and fixed the, and made the wording more clear in the pattern. Um, and so I, it was a bit of a, what do you call that? A, a nice moment for me to realize okay I mean I know the pattern said what to do but it could have been clear and it's nice that they went back and made it clear but it was qu quite the oh here it is um he says close the short row gaps turn to the wrong side and when you turn to the wrong side it's like I don't know I don't know it was just I just wish they would have been like hey you're back to knitting in the round and you're going to finish up your short rows. And so they've since cleared it up and, and uh, they fixed it in post, as we would say. Uh, that being said, that's another downside of having physical copies of books. You still have to go online and check to see if there are updates or erratas to the pattern. But last, but certainly not least, we're going to go back to the Night Nook sweater, which is the sweater he's wearing on the cover here. Um, it is a top down, uh, saddle shoulder situation. Let me just break it out because, you know, we're sick of looking at pictures from the book and y'all have seen this on my Instagram and you've seen it on here and I'm actually going to put it on right now because it's actually a bit chilly in my house. I have to be honest. And usually I don't wear my knits because I get kind of hot when I start to talk, but I have since finished it. So I'm just going to put it on and talk through it. Um, yeah, so it's got a brioche saddle shoulder situation. Then you knit the front and there's this kind of trapezoidal shoulder plate situation here. And there's another plate on the back. Then you pick up knit in the round and do a little bit of raglan shaping. Then you got sleeves and it's a really... <sighs> I guess this is very much an acquired taste. I definitely looked at this several times and was just like, this is not me. I'm not knitting this. I offered to knit for Mr. Rulu and he was just like, I don't think that's me either. And so I don't know what made me change my mind. I just, cause I guess, cause I had it and I was just like, I just want to knit this and I'm, 
a bit of a Stephen West completionist, I guess you could say. So I'm like, eventually I'm going to knit all of his patterns anyway. But he's definitely more known for his shawls and his sweaters are a bit more an acquired taste. Let me say that. Um, so uh, tread lightly if you like really simple plain stuff. I mean, you could knit this solid, but even if you knit this solid, you still have brioche on the arms. You still have this armor plate in the front. Um, I feel like it's going to block out and get a little bit more gentle. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like an oversized situation. And I have a 40 inch bust. So I did the uh, size medium, which is a 44 inch bust. I was going to go for some negative ease but I didn't want it to look too Starfleet on me, if you will. And I also, with a thicker sweater, I didn't want too much fabric up in here. But for all of the reservations I had, and for as strange as I know it looks, it was an absolute joy to knit. Like it was, if y'all watch It's a Sarah's podcast, it's heart jumping every single time I picked it up to knit on it. Like I would get to certain parts where normally I would put another sweater down and be like, oh, I don't really feel like splitting sleeves today. But I was always so excited to work on it because it was always something so new. Part of the reason why is this top colorful part is my hand spun. Um, the black is Patton's Classic Worsted in Black. The blue is this lagoon color from Cloudborn and just everything about it was just just so fun to me like I you know going back to the theme of hibernating the idea of knitting and it's Christmas time for me it's solstice time for me so this is very much giving me crystal not crystal Christmas lights a stained glass windows and it just was a lot of fun um and so if you are a Stephen West completionist, if you appreciate unique things, this is definitely a winner. The only downside to this is that I only need one of these. So I can't see myself like going back to this pattern over and over again. Um, the one thing I do like about this pattern a lot is the collar. The collar is actually the same for every single size in the pattern. And you cast on the stitches and you fold it over and it's, yeah. And so I can see myself if I were ever like draft my own worsted weight sweater, I could see myself just always using this cast on because it, I know it can go over my head. I know it's not going to be like all up in here on me. Um, on a smaller size, you could you know block it out and make it more like stretched out. But I kind of like it just kind of up here like this. Um, the other downside to this pattern is that it, the biggest size is a 58 inch chest circumference, which doesn't really pass the uh, modern definition of size inclusivity. Uh, the pattern itself, you could suss out pretty easily the math to do it a little bit bigger and like I said the cast on is the same for all of the sizes and the concept is the same you would probably just need to do extra raglan increases uh, but I have seen people on Instagram um, as far as like the movement towards more uh, size inclusivity suggest reaching out to pattern designers and just being like hey I want to knit this pattern are you planning on making bigger sizes? I'll test it for you if you give me the pattern. And apparently that's a, a, a good way of approaching that situation. The thing with this is that for as popular as Stephen West is, I feel like this is not one of his most popular patterns. I had a hard time. I, I did. I always try to look at Ravelry projects before I cast on and there were maybe like four or five projects. And I think a lot of people are off put by the look of it, by the, the cut of it. Um, and so uh, I don't know if he would go back and make bigger sizes just because it's not that popular of a pattern, or maybe it would be more popular if it was in bigger sizes. Um, I, you know, that's usually how it works. And also, you know, being that he, you know, has a more, you know, barrel chested body, I think it might lend itself well to bigger bodies. Uh, the differences, uh, I made in this one, I did, um, it's worsted weight. The pattern itself calls for bulky 
but uh, this is more of a worsted weight situation. Um, I am going to do more of a long form video about everything I did with this pattern. Um, but that's probably going to be next week, maybe if nothing else pressing comes up. And so you'll, this is not the last you've heard of this sweater. Um, it does need to be blocked. And so there's going to be more to talk about after it blocks. But for now, I'm super happy with it and I can't wait to wear it all Christmas long. And I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if I would knit another one. Uh, so as far as my assessment on this book, if you are a Stephen West completionist, it's definitely worth it just because of the economics of patterns and how patterns are printed and how much, you know, individual patterns cost, you know, about 10 bucks. And this is the entire collection for $25. Um, if you're not a Stephen West completionist or, you, you know, you don't want a random hat, you know, there's no, you know, as far as a knitting collection, there's no socks, no mittens. Um, like I said, Stephen West is more known for his shawls. Um, so what I would recommend, you know, if you're, you know, obviously he has a couple of free patterns out there. If you want to knit one or two of his patterns, you know, spend the 10 bucks. But if you are a big Stephen West fan, but not quite like the biggest Stephen West fan, I highly recommend Westness, West Knits Best Knits Volume 1, Just the Shawls, because that's what he's known for. And that's what I believe he does best. And that's the most wearable of the things that he designs. And so you'll be able to find something that fits all taste levels. Um, for me, definitely worth the price of admission. For me, I've definitely gotten $25 out of use of this. Um, you know, you'll see me next week and I will have cast on the hibernating cow because I'll be seeing you December 2nd. Um, definitely I'm going to probably knit those two shawls again. I'm always going to be knitting these because this gave me my idea of my perfect knit hat. Uh, the snow flurries hat, maybe with the errata, I do want to make it just because the cover is his matching hat with the sweater and so I do have enough yarn to make a matching hat for myself and then I can do a little pom-pom with some hand spun. I think that'll be super cute. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave the rest of my hibernating talk to next week. I hope something here has moved you to do all of the YouTube things. Uh, like, subscribe, share this post with a friend or this video with a friend. Hit me up at Rulud on Instagram. Send me an email, candybeadknitting at gmail.com. Uh, you can buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi and I can drink a coffee with my new sweater on. It's going to be great. Uh, but until the next time, peace.